Yeah, g'day. In this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to fault find a solar system. It's pretty straightforward, as long as you know what to do. Uh, first thing you want to do is going to test the DC voltage, which is to the panels, and the next thing will be insulation resistance test to the panels or of the panels, like checking for any earth faults. And the third test will be short circuit test, which is of the panels as well, which is testing the current. Uh, fourth thing will be testing the AC at the inverter, make sure the AC is coming to the inverter. And then the last thing will be testing the AC or testing the current at the uh, switchboard to make sure what the inverter says it's doing, uh, it actually is doing that and sending the power back to the switchboard. Sometimes the inverter will say it is, but it actually isn't. And the most, um, I guess the most likely fault in these kind of, uh, with a solar system is your inverter. That's number one. Uh, the inverter is the most likely thing to have a problem. The second most likely thing is probably a, um, a fault on the roof, not necessarily the panels, but like um, some sort of installation error, like the DC isolators, get water in them um, and they catch on fire or melt uh, and short out or like a plug hasn't been fit off correctly and that's melted uh, that's the most common for sure and after that it's probably the panels like an actual problem with the panel like cracked panel or broken panel um, degraded panel and then like the last thing is the AC that's by far the least likely of all the faults all right so first thing is we'll do the DC. First thing we'll turn off the inverter, so we turn off the AC and then at the DC. And now we're just going to uh, pull out the plugs and give them a test. All right, so I got me a uh, trusty multimeter here. Got the plugs out, so we're just going to test them. Turn this back on. Three hundred. Three thirty, so both looking pretty good. Next thing we do is the uh, old mega test insulation resistance. So we got on a thousand volts. So I don't know if you can see that. So what we do here is you put it between uh, earth or any sort of uh, metal part of the frame, which will because it'll be earth, and then you go between each different one, negative and positive. Yeah, so they're all good. If you get anything around 10 mega ohms or less, then the panel's probably no good, or there's a short somewhere between a panel. Um, and if it's dry, that might be going at the time, but then once you get a bit of uh, moisture or rain, that fold will probably get worse, and then that'll be enough to uh, turn the inverter off when it detects it. Also, if you don't have one of these uh, megas, you can just use your uh, just a normal multimeter and you just put the prongs between the earth or the frame and between all those plugs and if you get any sort of voltage like anything over 10 volts I guess but if there's some sort of fault you'll probably get like 40 60 volts something like that like a reasonable amount that's that's the same so that's an easy way to not have to use the other meter you just use your multimeter check the DC voltage and then you quickly just put it on the the frame and then check again um, and you'll know if there's a fault. So the next thing now we'll do is a short circuit test. And I've just got me a clamp meter here. 
So for this, we definitely got to turn the um, isolator off, otherwise there'll be some big sparking going on when we try to plug them together. Yeah, 11 amps, 13 amps, so that one's uh, obviously getting more sun. So they're fine. Um, so now we know everything on the roof's fine. There's no need to go on the roof. Um, the only problem could be left, could be at the switchboard or this AC. So we'll check the AC plug and then we'll check in the switchboard. So plugs all good, uh, voltage between active earth, active earth, active neutral, nothing between neutral earth. Um, so then now that's the last thing, we'll put it all back together, turn it on, and then we'll use the clamp meter in the switchboard and see if it's sent and current, we'll power back to the switchboard. All right, so I got me a uh, trusty clamp meter here and I've opened up the switchboard and pulled the cable out a bit. So we're just gonna put it this through it and see how much current's doing. So at the moment, it's uh, nine and a half amps, 2.3 kilo, 2.3 kilowatts on the inverter. So 2,300 divided by 230 volts, 10 amps. So it's pretty dead on. It's just ramping up 10 and a half now. So that's how we know the actual inverter is sending power back. That's caught me out earlier when I first started doing solar. It'll look good, I thought there was no problems, but the inverter wasn't doing what it was saying. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you do those tests, you'll, you'll find the problem for sure. It's uh, pretty straightforward, as you've just seen. Uh, another thing, sometimes people think that they've, there's something wrong with their solar, but it's just that their energy providers change their plan, like their, um, uh, their, their feed in, the rate that they get for the power they sell to the grid goes down, or they put up the the buying price and then suddenly they get this huge bill. I think it's the solar's not working but it's just the actual energy provider. It's done them over. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you're not sure, give us a call and we'll come check it out. Alright, have a good one.